How's it going everybody? Welcome to the video, Dylan Johnson here, and today I'm going to be taking you through a pretty sick chest and triceps. Well, chest, kind of push day workout, so chest, triceps, a little bit of shoulders thrown in there. Um, but starting off, we're going to be hitting an incline dumbbell bench press. Now, one of the reasons for this is I want to start with an incline movement and an incline pressing movement because we're going to be trying to target our upper chest. So a lot of people will move straight to the flat bench and they'll go and pre exhaust themselves on the flat bench with a fairly heavy movement and they'll get a great kind of lower pectoral development but their upper chest will be fairly neglected so we want to start with an incline movement hit that hard where we're our strongest so we can break down the most muscle fibers before moving on to something like the flat bench which is what we hit next so for the first movement we hit four sets of around eight reps, really focusing on going a little bit heavier, controlling the tempo, and focusing on that squeeze. Now, once we finish that, then we hit the flat bench. So then we transition into a heavier flat pressing movement. Now, as you notice here, I pretty much pre-exhausted myself on the um, incline, so I'm not going super heavy, but I'm also focusing uh, on my tempo. So I'm really slowing down those negatives. This isn't slowed down or anything. This isn't sped up. This is just controlling those negatives and really focusing on bringing the bar all the way down to my chest, pausing while I have the strength. And then once I've um, kind of started to fatigue, as you saw there, just kind of repped out a few extra, a uh, few extra reps. Now, one thing that I did do on my last working set here is I started to incorporate a rest pause set. So I did four sets of around 10 to 12 reps, so keeping that rep range a little bit higher, so that because I'm going a little bit lighter, um, but on a final set, so on the fifth set, I did basically as many reps as I could possibly get, which I think was like, I'm not sure I didn't count there, but like eight, maybe 10 reps. And then I took a couple of rest pause sets. So what that is, if you haven't tried or heard of rest pauses before, basically without resting for too long, you're gonna stop the movement, rest um, your muscles, allow yourself to recuperate a little bit of energy, and then pump out one more rep. And then you're gonna do that again, pump out another rep. Here, I'm keeping my rest around like five to 10 seconds at most. Again, the goal is not to um, completely rest. You're not taking like a 60 or 30 second rest. You're only resting five, 10 seconds maximum. And then you're gonna go and try and hit another rep as soon as you're finished with that. And the goal for this is basically it's a way of increasing the intensity, pushing past failure and kind of breaking through plateaus. So this is a great technique to try on just about any exercise um, for any muscle group where you want to try and break through a plateau or break to a new level of strength and hypertrophy. So yeah, definitely give this a try if you haven't tried it before. Like I said, keep the rest time to about five to 10 seconds maximum. And here I did actually five total rest pauses. And you can actually see that I'm, again, really controlling my tempo. Even though I'm pausing and taking that rest, I'm not just throwing the weight around. I'm coming down under control, pausing the bar on my chest, and then driving up as hard as I can. Now, once we finish that, we're moving into a seated cable fly. One reason I like to do this movement seated is because it really helps me to isolate my chest. I'm not um, leaning, I'm not throwing my body around, I'm staying nice and in control, focusing on stretching my muscles out, stretching my chest at the bottom, and then squeezing as hard as I can at the top. Something else you'll notice here is my elbows and the cable are staying in line throughout the entire range of motion. That's a key component to this movement to help prevent yourself from getting injured. Ensure that, you're, ensure that your elbows are following that path of the cable and ensure that you aren't taking your arms too far back so that you're not gonna put yourself at a risk of injury. Now, once we finish that, we're gonna move on to our last chest exercise and we're gonna start tying in our triceps here. This is going to be a stand or just a standard dip. Um, for me, I don't like to add weight because I like to focus more on the movement. And then once I start to fail, sometimes what I'll do is I'll throw in some negative reps. So what that means is basically I'll just 
step on the bench or step on the steps, get myself back up to the top, and then just focus on that negative. Um, I don't know if I did any here, but something else to note with a dip, there's a few different ways to target different muscle groups. So one way is if you lean further forward, you're going to tend to, and I always get these backwards when I think about them. I easier to think about it when I'm actually doing the movement but one way if you lean forward I believe it's if you lean forward you're gonna end up activating a little bit more chest no if you lean forward you're gonna activate more tricep versus if you stay upright you're gonna tend to activate more of your chest I mean just move your arms and through the movement and see what you think the further down you bring your arms and you pinch them back you're gonna work tricep the further up you keep them you're gonna work your chest at least that's the way I feel it Everybody's a little bit different, but do whatever you feel best. And with that one, again, we're just trying to go through the movement, focus on finishing out our chest and warming up our triceps. Now, once we finished with that, we're going to move straight into a a bench dumbbell skull crusher. Um, so this is on a flat bench. You're going to grab a couple of dumbbells and you'll notice a few things here. One, I'm rotating my wrists in, so I'm pronating that, supinating them. Ugh, bleh, I can never remember this one either. <laughs> um, but basically, I'm rotating my wrists in so that my palms are going to be facing my forehead at the bottom, and then I bring them back up and turn them back towards the um, ceiling as I'm bringing them up. That's going to really target that tricep a little bit more, give us a better range of motion. And for that one, we were doing, again, about three to four sets, whatever you feel, for like 10 to 12 reps. And then I really tried to pump out an extra like three to five Five reps at the end of each set just again to push past failure push that past those plateaus and breaking points and try to encourage the muscle to grow as much as possible once we finish with that we're moving into some single arm uh, tricep extensions on a cable machine with this, as you can see here, once I start to fatigue, then I'm gonna use my other hand to assist a little bit and work that negative portion of the rep a little bit more. So I go um, for like eight to 10 reps, maintaining as strict a form as possible. And I'm really trying to think about here the mind-muscle connection between the short head of my tricep and this movement. So if you try and think of driving through your thumb a little bit more and rotating your palm down, that's gonna help engage that short head a little bit more than the long head and then again as we hit that as we hit our failing point we're going to start using that other hand to assist us for another like three to five reps once we finish that we're going to move straight into a cable press down um, using a v bar so a v, a v, v grip bar and with this one we're going to be going heavy so just try and use as much weight as you possibly can while maintaining proper form that's a huge thing on this movement a lot of people will throw the entire stack on the bar and then they'll just bang them out but the thing here is you really want to focus on keeping that time under tension and keeping your elbows um, in line with your torso and vertical as much as possible however you can see there at the very end of the reps that's when I started kind of throwing the weight around because I hit my face point and I just wanted to try and push past that so on that one we did three sets of again about eight to ten reps and like two to three maybe four or five um, forced reps at the very end of the set now once we finish that we're gonna move into some shoulder exercises this is a great shoulder exercise that I've been doing recently to kind of warm up the shoulders and it also is gonna engage not just your rear delts or not just your lateral delts but it's also gonna tie in a bit of front delt and especially a bit of rear delt because the goal of this is you're gonna bring your hands out to the side as if you were doing a lateral raise and then as you pass parallel with the, with the floor you're gonna turn your thumbs towards each other and then you're gonna bring your palms towards each other and over your head with this when you're bringing your palms together at, to at the top of the movement try and bring them together behind your head so that you're squeezing those rear delts and this is just a really good movement um, try it with some really lightweight first but it's a great movement to engage and warm up the entire shoulder now did that for about four sets of 10 to 12 reps then I moved into some front raises. With this, again, this is something else that I've been doing a lot recently. It's a full front raise. And what I like about this is it not only engages my front delt, but it also ties in a little bit of my trap, which I tend to neglect a bit. Um, 
So with this one, it's a great movement to kind of work multiple muscle groups, but it also just kind of felt good on this day. So on this one, we're just going real slow as I start to fatigue. I'm using a little bit of momentum from one coming down to help raise the other one. But the goal here is to get about eight to 12 reps per arm. Now, with this, we were also doing about three sets, whatever you kind of feel. That's one thing for me is I'm very instinctual with my training. I tend to do more of kind of how I feel on a movement in terms of reps and sets versus saying I'm going to do only four sets of 10 reps. I'm going to do three sets of eight to 12 reps. That's not really how I like to train. I enjoy um, going in and doing more of like, I'm really feeling this movement on this day. So I'm going to do instead of four sets, I'm going to do maybe six sets, but I'm going to change up the reps, change up the tempo, things like that. Um, just different things to keep the movements different and keep the body guessing and just kind of keep the gym fun. Cause overall you're going to be doing the same movements a lot from time to time. And you got to find a way, a way to keep it interesting for yourself. At least that's the way I see it. Now we're going to finish off with a rear cable fly. So you can see here, I'm leaning into the movement, controlling the tempo, and then just banging out a few of those extra reps at the end. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. If you give this workout a try, let me know what you guys think. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.